Live and local, across the Ribble Valley, Ribble FM. You're listening to Brunch on Ribble FM, sponsored by Oswald Whistle Mill Shopping Village and Garden Centre. Mill shopping at its best. back to the show you just heard a track called paradox by local musician stephen peters from chatburn in the ribble valley who was a self-taught multi-instrumentalist and composer and he was recently number one in the reverb nation instrumental charts for the uk and i'm glad to say that stephen joins me in the studio now good morning and thanks for coming in today steve good morning so uh you're a self-taught musician um so just take us back to kind of where it all started for you then Uh, around about three years old uh, i was able to play chopsticks on the piano i think (laughs) it was and uh, it developed from there um 12 years old i took up the guitar acoustic guitar yeah uh went on to electric after that had a few years break from it and around about 2007 i took up the guitar again and then uh, playing along to uh, basically karaoke tracks, I think, and then yeah. uh, decided to take it further, bought myself a keyboard and kitted myself out with um, a digital audio workstation and equipment and started producing my own stuff from there. Yeah, so it's all just come by air, from air, really. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I said off air that um, just when we were listening to that track that it is amazing that one person can make music which sounds so layered and mm, yeah. um, as if it is almost like a full band and what kind of drama would you describe your music as? Um, uh, I suppose the best fit for the genre would be uh, cinematic I suppose um, that, that, that's probably um, well obviously instrumental mm. uh, genre uh, soft rock yeah um, 
but it best fits the cinematic genre, I think, really. Yeah, I think that fits quite well. Mm. And obviously, yeah. um, it's no surprise then that you've been approached by a film company who yeah. want to use your music. And we'll come back to that in a moment. But you've got 10 albums, don't you? So um, when did you first start making and producing albums then? Uh, probably, the first, I think the first one was released uh, in 2010. Right. And I've been producing them ever since. Yeah. Um, I mean, my last one took four years to complete. Yeah. Um, so the first maybe three or four, I, I, I ran off in quick succession and published them. Um, but I've been taking my time with the last couple of albums. Mm. And uh, I think um, over the years, the quality has improved. I mean, you, you, yeah. you, you do carry on learning. You don't just pick up a guitar and learn instantly or, or a keyboard or, or or even the software you're using it, it's a it's a it's a learning curve over the years uh, and the music has improved as i've been going along yeah and um is it all self-produced and yes. self-made then and self-released as well it is, yes yeah. yeah so i guess you've kind of got like a bit of freedom then as to when oh, you yeah. want to release stuff there's no one uh kind of pressuring you no, to there's no do it in a set no. period of time and then as for your setup, then have you got a studio at home that you record from? A converted bedroom, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Much like this. Yeah, so just quite a small room with <laughs> yeah. all your equipment. And uh, you've—I I mentioned as well in the intro that you were number one in the uh, Reverb Nation instrumental charts for the UK. So mm. when when was that? And when I'm did currently you, number four oh, at the moment. You're number four now, so mm. still in, still in the charts for the instrumental charts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, when did you find out about that and? Um, how did that kind of come about? What the the, the film or the the uh, charts? the charts? Um, oh, it must be two or three years now. I've been at number one. Yeah. Um, I'm number one for this region. That doesn't seem to fluctuate for some oh, reason right. for that's the for the north of England. Yeah. But, um, and that's that's currently. Um, and um, like I say, number four uh, for the United Kingdom. Yeah, um, I think it's three hundred and some three hundred and sixty something globally. Yeah, for the instrumental charts, it's uh, it's quite a big site. So, mm -hmm. um, the Reverb Nation is quite a big site. So they they have millions of artists yeah. on there. You know, literally. Yeah. Um, but um, I mean, it's based on plays mm. uh, and um, subscribers basically. And I mean, uh, my YouTube subscribers is close. I think it's 6,000 at the moment and oh, I've, right, I've well. got a few million plays of, of my mm. videos on there so uh, and all that it, it, it goes into the equation as right. to where you are on the charts yeah um, so yeah that's great and obviously like digital platforms are yeah. massive at the moment mm. so yeah that's that's great that you're within the top mm. uh, percent like consistently and um, we'll play another one of your tracks now and then we'll come back and talk about the film so okay. you sent me some of your favorites and yeah. the one that I'm going to play next is Palomino so just tell us a bit about that track and why you like that one so much um it's just a nice tune catchy yeah I, I mean I've a cinematic version as well which is a bit too long to play on radio <laughs> I think so but that starts off with um a, a harp Right. For the first wow. two minutes, and then that gets blended into guitars and, and pian pianos and and you know um, string backing and everything yeah. else. But yeah. the, this, this one's quite a nice, quite a nice track. Yeah, great. One, well, one, of, one of my favourites. Yeah, we'll have a listen, and then we'll come back and chat some more. Thank you. 
That was Stephen Peters and Palomino and Steve is here in the studio with me now and we've been talking all about his music which is completely self-produced and um, he's number, he was number one in the Reverb Nation instrumental charts and is currently at number four as well and um, we touched on the fact that Steve, uh, your music is being featured in a film yes. and it's a, a production company from the Netherlands, isn't it? It is, yes. Yeah, so... Um, how did that come about and how did you find out that it was going to be used? I have no idea. I haven't asked him. Um, <laughs> but he just approached me one day. He sent me a personal message on Facebook saying, you know, my name's uh, Will Cess. Is that Will? Will something or other. Hang on. Cess. Yeah. And uh, it goes on a pseudonym on Facebook. It doesn't oh, use right. a real name. Yeah. And uh, he, um, he approached me and said, look, uh, your music's great, basically, and I want to I, I want to use your music on a film. I'm just in, in the process of starting to produce All right. so well, I, I thought well I, I took a, a couple of days to ponder over it and I thought well why not you know um, I've been approached before mm. um, not by film companies um, uh, by YouTube artists I think yeah. uh, and, and they say oh can I use one of your tracks on my film and as soon as you start mentioning the word money they, mm. they shy away <laughs> yeah. so um with this film in the Netherlands, I've, I've basically given him the tracks, mm. um, and we'll see when it, when it's published um, on Amazon uh, how it goes. Yeah, um, I'll just probably get the uh, royalties. Well, I, well, I would hope so yeah, <laughs> from yeah. from from the uh, performances of the film and 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 the view count. Yeah, um, I think that's the way forward to go. Mm-hmm. But it's still kind of in the early stages. It's, it? it's yeah. in the um, uh, very early stages. Mm-hmm. Yet he has to take it to the uh, film market in America in November, and hopefully sometime next year uh, it'll be published. But these things take time. Yeah, yeah. And you've just found out the title of it. Um, oh, yes, it's you? called um, "Devil's Left Hand: The Babbingdon Plot." So. Um, I would imagine that's a period drama. I'm not sure where he hasn't said anything, yeah. but judging by the name of it, it will be a, a period drama. Yeah, that would so. make that would make sense. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, I just wanted to talk about some of the artists that kind of inspire you as well. So, who are some of your uh, favourite musicians as well? Uh, Mike Oldfield. Mm-hmm. Um, I used to listen to him quite a lot. The Shadows, Hank Marvin. Um, uh, Jean-Michel Jarre, I was a bit weird that way. <laughs> I used, used to like let it, listening to his stuff. Yeah. Um, Van Gelis, mm-hmm. I was very weird as a kid. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, especially if you started uh, mm. learning uh, yeah. at around the age of three and 12 yeah. and you were listening to all these artists. Yeah, mm. that's amazing. Mm. And um, what does the future kind of hold for you then? Would you Are, are you continuing to record new music? I haven't done anything for a long while. Um, sometimes I do take myself up into my converted studio in brackets, yeah. um, my spare bedroom, and have a play around on the keyboard. I haven't touched the guitar for quite a while, and I've lost the calluses on my fingers, so that's going to hurt when I pick it up again. Um, but um, no, I, I haven't. I haven't really um, felt the urge really yeah. to to go and produce anything new I, i've got i would say 200 original tracks so yeah. it, it's getting more and more difficult to uh, uh visualize anything in my head yeah. to actually produce that's that's different to the mm. rest of the stuff yeah significantly different to the rest mm. of the stuff that it's worth um producing you know yeah. worth sitting down and actually spending several days on on on, on perfecting it yeah. Because it doesn't just happen overnight. You've got to spend hours upon hours upon hours laying one track on top of the other. Yeah, of course. Uh, and then, of course, if you make a mess of it, you've got to start again on, on any particular instrument. Um, so unless you actually know anything about that side of things, mm. y- it's not just a question of, oh, I'll play this and it's and then produce it. It takes days, possibly yeah. even weeks, yeah. of, of sitting down and... and uh, playing it and then listening back to it and thinking oh, maybe I could do better or, or I've done this wrong maybe it'll sound better if I do mm-hmm. uh, play it a certain way you know an arpeggio here and there or, or 
a different uh, uh, play it in a different key or use a different instrument, which is easily done when you when you've got uh, uh, audio workstation and, and a keyboard. You can yeah. use virtually any instrument just by a stroke of a key. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I guess there's no like rush to make anything new if uh, just when, no. whenever inspiration strikes. Whenever it you strikes. Find, whenever yeah. it strikes. Yeah. Yeah. When um, you find a new idea. My, my time's occupied at the moment with other things yeah. um, uh, as well as work, but. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, and other hobbies, because um, yeah. after all, it did start off only as a hobby. Yeah, um, exactly. The first ever tune I, re- uh, I produced, um, I did it obviously for fun. I, I videoed myself playing um, the Titanic thing mm-hmm. um, on guitar to a, 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 um, a, a pre-produced backing track, um, which obviously it was supposed to be sung to. But anyway, yeah. I, I played the uh, the vocal parts on guitar, published that. And uh, it got it got several hundred thousand views, um, and that just encouraged me to to play more um, uh, cover songs, yeah. cover tunes. And then uh, one day I just decided to maybe I should start writing my own. Yeah, um, and that's how it all happened. Mm-hmm. And um, I really like those tracks that we heard earlier. And if people who are listening to this want to follow your music and find it where where can they find it they can find me on uh, youtube stephen mm-hmm. peter's music stephen with a ph if they're going to type it in yeah. and i also have uh, a verified facebook page as well which they can check in on um, yeah. um that's basically it i don't really bother with twitter i think it's not not my kind of thing i do yeah. have a twitter account but i don't usually go on there as a rule yeah so yeah, it's it's all online and people mm. can find it there. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you so much for coming in and telling us about it, and um, we look forward to uh, hearing more about the film as well as thank, that develops. Thanks, thanks so, for having me. Thank you. The voice of the valley. This is Ribble FM.